people don't see on TV is that there are times when we didn't get fed. We had to film straight through 15, 18 hours without eating. It's almost like they want us to go in there angry so they can have drama. I have never in my life yelled at a girl like this. I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. How dare you? This show wasn't meant to help us. It was meant to break us down. The whole race swapping shoot, you know, I was very uncomfortable. My, I knew certain things at that point I couldn't even go to Tyra with. And they basically said I had to do that shoot. She tortured us. That runway was so unsafe. Do you really think you can have a cover girl contract with the gap in your mouth? This is all people see. It's easy to beautiful cover girl. Well, I guess she just left the gap wide open for another girl, baby. I agree. Let's get into it. Hey guys, are you looking to grow your business effortlessly? Look no further than Shopify, the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. Whether you're launching an online shop or hitting a million orders, Shopify has you covered. From e-commerce to in-person sales, their all-in-one platform makes it easy to sell everywhere. Plus, with Shopify Magic, their AI-powered tool, you can sell more with less effort. Join the millions of entrepreneurs powered by Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash sloan. That's shopify.com slash sloan and enjoy this episode. Welcome back to the Let's Get Into It podcast. Today, we're talking all about America's Next Top Model. I was raised on this show, and even I'm shook at some of the things they were able to get away with. So we're going to be talking about the series' worst moments, including times where they were racially insensitive, where they've traumatized contestants and took advantage of vulnerable women whose only dream was to be a model. Now, America's Next Top Model was a popular reality series and modeling competition created by Tyra Banks. The show premiered in 2003 and ran for 24 seasons, with its final season airing in 2018. The series was highly successful, becoming one of the longest-running reality TV shows in the U.S. The show's format included various challenges, photo shoots, and weekly eliminations judged by a panel of fashion experts. Now, the judges may have changed out throughout the seasons, but Tyra Banks was always there. This was her show, and she's really the person who's responsible for Everything that happened, all the bad behavior, all these ideas, these terrible competitions, which I want to start off by talking about some of the racist moments. On more than one occasion, the models were asked to wear makeup that was supposed to make them look like a different ethnicity. Now, blackface has been a problem for a long time. We've talked about cultural appropriation. These are topics that are well known, or at least I would assume that, you know, People know of them, at least those who are creating TV, who are in the industry, who are generally in the progressive, like, uh, population. A lot of, like, gay people, fashion people, like, queer people, people who know what's right and wrong, not to go and make a white girl look like a black woman. In Cycle 13, which premiered in 2009, the models were asked to pose in a biracial photo shoot in which they wore makeup and costumes that were supposed to indicate two different ethnicities. Multiple contestants wore thick makeup that darkened their skin tone, which is straight up blackface, something that is really looked down upon. So I can't believe Tyra Banks, a black woman, saw this and just was okay with it. The race is on. Be ready to show your true colors at seven o'clock in the morning. So as you guys can see, there are several models and their photos displayed next to them. And clearly they are not in their regular attire. They are acting like they are someone they're not supposed to be. This, in my opinion, goes beyond modeling and it's incredibly inappropriate. I mean, there are so many people on this set. How did anyone just allow this to go on? Especially when your name, your reputation, your career is associated with this moment and this production. I just wouldn't want to be tied back to it. And that's why Tyra Banks has never really been able to escape this. The photo shoot's creative director is Jay Manuel, and he actually addressed the backlash, saying, many times when you're working in an environment like that, you have to listen to your executive producers. Ultimately, the two voices at the top were Ken and Tyra Banks. So, ooh, he's throwing it back on Tyra Banks. Wow. I was so, so, so uncomfortable with this. I was basically told I had to execute this creative, and it made me very uncomfortable. And I'm not surprised that like 
or I wouldn't be surprised if these people all were fully aware how wrong it was, but they knew it would stir up some good TV. And, you know, the competition, while it was a competition for modeling, it was really primarily a reality show. So they want to make good TV at the end of the day, and they thought this would be it. The whole race swapping shoot, you know, I was very uncomfortable. My my parents grew up in South Africa. They're from South Africa. Um, so you've got to understand the kind of the family I grew up in. I'm biracial. It's just, it's, it just was very uncomfortable. So I did go to my co-executive producer at the time because it was kind of understood. Like I, I knew certain things at that point I couldn't even go to Tyra with. And they basically said I had to do that shoot. So Jay has had to respond to this moment and Tyra has taken time to respond as well. Now, I don't know if she meant this because she had deleted this tweet in May 2020. She tweeted, been seeing these posts about the insensitivity of some past America's Next Top Model moments. And I agree with you. Looking back, those were some really off choices. Appreciate your honest feedback. And I'm sending so much love and virtual hugs. Hmm. Okay, well, we're giving your honest feedback. It's a little bit too late. Actually, do I even see a sorry? I don't even see a sorry here. There's no like, I'm sorry. It's just like a sending love and virtual hugs. XOXO. In season three, there was a contestant who was criticized several times for embracing her African heritage. A white guest judge voted to eliminate her saying, you have this intensity to prove your sort of Africanness and it's not attractive. So this person fell off put by someone else's culture and decided they need to be eliminated because their culture was just too abrasive for them to feel comfortable. Just because we had to talk about, you know, Afrocentricity before, and it's kind of misunderstood. I'm all about, like, expressing yourself and your culture, but it's still done in a fashion way. You want your outfit to be, look at me, and this outfit is, look over there. One of the biggest parts of this series in the show is the makeover episode, which... I would be lying if I said it wasn't my favorite because we all love to see the makeovers and what they can do, but sometimes they pushed it way too far. Again, not to make this woman a better model, to make them more attractive, but to create good TV. When it came to black models and the makeovers, Tyra always made them change their hair texture or cut off their natural hair. This sent a message that black hair wasn't beautiful, nor was it deemed acceptable in the model world, which I would, I, again, I think that's totally valid. I would say that she, they kind of, I think they always want to change everyone a lot. Um, but then again, there were people who had beautiful natural hair. There are some weaves that were put in just completely incorrectly. So um, it does seem like Tyra was kind of going at the black contestants, making it more difficult for them or making them feel like they weren't okay as they were already. I never cut my hair drastically on my eyes. Just a shock. I wasn't supposed to build my confidence. I just came out the bottom too. Now I don't got no hair. In hindsight, I can look at these episodes and tell that they were on a budget. They weren't out here using the best hairstylists, the most, uh, you know, experienced people. And I'm not talking bad about the stylists, like whatever, but they didn't know what they were doing, especially to black women or people who had dyed hair, processed hair. They would be ordered to do these things that they are not trained in and they would execute them terribly and now the model has to live with it people did not have the correct clippers everybody basically said they didn't know what to do so we leave a little tough <laughs> i didn't like the way the woman was cutting my hand the way they were having conversation in front of me should we write her name yeah <laughs> it is uneven yeah oh, up shaving yeah. your head that fast and it's very upsetting to an african-american woman to go into a salon and a person to do her hair incorrectly it's very inappropriate it doesn't make any sense to me Oh, I'm so frustrated watching that moment. Like when she said, oh, should we write her name in her head? Like, it, I, if you've never seen a microaggression before, there you go. Another black contestant revealed that Tyra would have to send black models to certified hairdressers off camera to fix the incorrectly and unprofessionally done hairstyles. So Tyra would take it on to herself to go and fix these problems, knowingly putting these girls into this scene where these people were to mess up their hair and then maybe having a little bit of empathy for them realizing that their hair was so messed up that she was like you know what i'll i'll go get someone to help you but it's too late and you very embarrassed them on camera a contestant named tiffany revealed that she was labeled the uneducated ghetto girl because of her accent and look which again that terminology i don't even like saying that but that's what they tried to play her off as and it does again go back to the reality tv of it all where they're trying to fill these characters and they're trying to paint this woman out to someone who they want to be portrayed as on TV. It's all fake. Uh -huh. But without the ghetto face. There are many indications of Southern in your speech. It's going to be a big handicap. The other girls speak a little more clearly than I do, and I know it, so it's going to take time. Put it like this. I don't talk like nobody here. That's fine. You ain't got to talk like nobody there. 
They say everybody always talk about the ghetto, like there's something bad. Like only bad people come from the ghetto. There are intelligent people in the ghetto. My mom's intelligent, my grandma's very intelligent. I'm ghetto because probably I chose to be ghetto and that's just, that's who I am. A lot of people's interpretation of being ghetto is something that's not everybody. So that's why I don't talk like the other girls who live in Compton. Like. I just felt so upset at myself that I've been trying to change all these different things about me and I'm unhappy. Poor Tiffany having to go and defend herself, not only for who she is, but for her right to be there. I mean, people have British accents, they have Asian accents, all these different kind of accents. So to have a Southern accent, to have whatever she would describe as like a ghetto accent, which I don't even think that's like, again, that's like just not an appropriate, that's not appropriate because it's, it's like characterizing like ghetto has been used in a negative sense. So to call it that, it just makes, I actually have like goosebumps. It makes me super uncomfortable because to me, it's just so demeaning and you can watch it and, and like live TV. And I just think about like those little kids who like saw that and felt like they relate to her and that they don't belong here. And that's why, um, it's just important to like honestly put respect on that girl's name that model's name tiffany because she really like advocated for herself when no one was in this series black women were consistently criticized for their skin because america's next top model did not have makeup artists that catered to their skin type and tone so a lot of the black models would be clocked for having bad skin or for their makeup looking bad when these people were the ones responsible for hiring them to make them look good so it really just set them up for failure and with your skin texture being an african-american woman it should be like butter at the retouching session your photo was the hardest that we had to do i love the color of her skin i really do but up close she just looked so old a petit bouton do you have a little skin problem just a little it's a menstrual breakout <laughs> You have to work on that skin. You drink more water. Water, water, water. You can get there, but it's going to take some work. You're unretouched shop. It's like a Hitchcock film. Go back and forth, back and forth really fast to see what I mean. What are you feeling right now, Kelly? You look a little... It's very shocking to see it like this. The people that usually see my skin tell me that I have beautiful skin. It is shocking. It's also shocking that the edit doesn't look that different. I mean, I'll put it back up on the screen. You guys can see she doesn't look that different between the two. So that reaction from Janice Dickinson was uh, really unwavered. And um, it kind of reminds me of my reaction to watching Janice perform in West Hollywood. I saw her perform her uh, song she released like two years ago. And I think I posted, and she actually uh, look, looked at it on Instagram. I posted that it was the worst performance I ever see in my life. It was terrible. It looked like she could barely even walk. Here. And she's, you know, she's older, so whatever. But like, don't go and perform a pop song if you're not going to sing. You can barely move, and you're going to go out here criticizing everyone else. Well, girl, Janice, you're barely holding it together on stage. But it wasn't just black women receiving all the heat. Asian women did as well. There was one model who felt like she was the underdog because of her ethnicity, which put a lot of mental pressure on her. Which I can't imagine i mean this feeling of not belonging and kind of just being like kicked out of the group because of something you cannot change it's really debilitating well, come on what percentage of magazine covers do you see an asian on? it's rougher being an asian than a black woman tyra has told me right up front the fashion industry is all about race really? do you see asian girls on the covers of magazines and i'm not talking about lucy Liu. she's an actress so with you entering this fashion world you would be the underdog this industry only allows for one person of color in that certain category at a time so like april if you make it you know you are the top asian girl at the moment i understand that yes my look is much more dominantly Asian than white. Therefore, I must market myself that way. It's just so disappointing, and there are so many other disappointing moments as well, which takes us to our next segment. While I think a lot of them were racially insensitive, there were a lot of shoots in general that were just insensitive and offensive. Something that if I was a model, I wouldn't want to be placed in this kind of scenery and have my photo taken like that. Now, a model named Kaylin was forced into a challenge photo shoot that really triggered her because she just learned that her friend had passed away of an overdose and they had to go and all model at a cemetery and act like they were in a grave, which her friend just died and now she's having to portray someone who's like in the ground, like dead. It's kind of morbid. I also have a feeling that producers kind of knew this and maybe set her up, but that's my own conspiracy. Kaylin struggled to get through the photo shoot and was even criticized for allowing her emotions to over overwhelm her to the point where she couldn't get a good shot. Now, some viewers have since called the photo shoot offensive and said it glamorizes violence against women. Oh, that's where we're going. Oh. I'm sitting next to King and she immediately just folds over and starts falling. Kaylin <laughs> is not having too much fun. 
So Kaylin is already triggered, already just going through the emotions. And of course, Jay Manuel was not supportive at all, telling her not to allow her emotions to bother her, telling her that, you know, it's it's a difficult thing, but you've got to push through. Trying to kind of get that TV moment, build this scene and evoke that emotion. It's really messed up. I mean, I know nobody knows the circumstances, but I just don't want to be here. Today, you girls are gonna have to portray one of these deadly sins, the bottom of this eight foot grave. Do you guys know what's wrong with Kayla? She had a friend that just died from high school. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Do you need a minute? Like to, to start hair and makeup? I can't imagine being Kaylin. I mean, I would be offended. I'd be upset. And um, it just kind of shows again that this was like a moment for television. They planned it for TV. If it wasn't, they wouldn't have included it so much of that breakdown. It would have been more of the photo shoot and the, the skill going into it. But no, it's about this because they want to push them to their limits. Let's talk about another offensive photo shoot concept, which included model stereotypes. The contestants are assigned model stereotypes to portray in their photos. These stereotypes include trigger warning warning, anorexic model, dumb blonde model, black model in the industry trying to turn white, bulimic model, drug addict model, and other offensive labels that we don't want associated with the modeling industry. So why are we like putting this on the biggest modeling reality show, kind of like pushing it into everyone's faces? Now, this isn't really LGBT friendly because in cycle five, Tyra Banks implied that gay contestant Kim should tone down her sexuality. Kim says, I'm gay and I'm really proud of it. She's a lesbian. And Tyra said, I I think there's a certain thing of being proud like i'm black and proud and you know what i mean but i'm not walking down the red carpet saying i'm black i'm black which i guess tyra kind of has a point there you don't need to shove it down anyone's throats kim replied saying no i certainly won't walk down the red carpet and try to kiss girls on the way that's not what i'm gonna do jay replied and said that he later criticized the incident saying he felt uncomfortable about tyra's remarks one moment i will never forget about when it comes to america's next top model history is when they made Cycle 6 winner Danielle Evans closed the gap in her front teeth. Eight cycles later, there was a white contestant who was encouraged to widen her gap. So there's this discrepancy whether like who can have a gap and who can't. Well, Danielle, you went to the dentist, but you refused to have your gap closed. Do you really think you can have a CoverGirl contract with a gap in your mouth? Yeah, why not? This is all people see. It's easy reads beautiful CoverGirl. It's not marketable. Yeah, just a little bit is okay, but I don't want to completely close it. Well, I guess she just left the gap wide open for another girl, baby. I agree. I am someone who naturally has a gap between my teeth. I've had it since filled. But I think there's something beautiful about having a gap, especially like that model. She's stunning. She doesn't need to change anything. But it's wild how dismissive the judges were to how she felt about her own appearance and her own teeth. Actually, Danielle put a statement out in 2020 when Tyra was addressing everything and said, I want to address all of those young girls. I'm going to take this time to build up and speak to all of my young queens who saw that episode and were truly affected by Tyra's words. It doesn't matter if you have a gap, stacked teeth, straight teeth, it does not matter. It doesn't matter if you're black, brown, white, indifferent, other. What makes you beautiful is in here. When it came to that white contestant who had her gap widen, some viewers said encouraging Kelsey to widen her tooth gap was hypocritical and had racist undertones considering their past conversations with Danielle about her teeth. One person commented, quote, it's definitely not coincidental that the fashion industry seems to love gap teeth on white girl, but then find them ratchet on a black girl. Now, Isis King was the first person who identified as transgender to appear on America's Next Top Model, and it definitely wasn't easy for Isis. During the first episode, multiple contestants made disparaging and transphobic comments about Isis. When a few contestants made comments about the size of Isis's breasts, they even called her over to address the rumors that had come up in conversation, asking if she was all female, which Isis replied saying, no, I was not physically born a female, which is just kind of awkward for her to have to go through, especially back at this time. It was still something that's not as normalized. Are you all female? Physically without born female, no. Oh. Ain't this supposed to be a girl competition? How did you get through the door? She, 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 she just said that she used to be a man. Reality is, she's a man. Who imagine something like that airing nowadays. Some contestants did stand up to defend Isis's right to be there. Not everyone was nice though. One person said, if I have to get along with Isis, I will. But then again, if it comes between me and my goal, I will stomp that man right out of the competition. Jeez, these people, really? You want to say this on TV? Do you think this makes you look cute? 
or likable. Isis is a transgender woman and she was able to pave a path for a lot of other people to join the show and for the competition to become more progressive. Although the atmosphere at America's Next Top Model has already been established as toxic, I want to talk a little bit about Kenya. Kenya Hill found herself being victim blamed by judges, crew members, and fellow contestants in Cycle 5 after standing up against a male model who she says touched her without her consent. So you would think that all the girls would like rally behind this contestant, but it seemed like everyone was dismissive of her. Throughout the episode, a male model can be seen pushing Kenya's boundaries, even asking her for a massage during hair and makeup. Throughout the photo shoot, the male model is moaning and touching Kenya inappropriately, making her visibly uncomfortable. After Kenya asked to stop the shoot, the director and his team invalidated her feelings, telling her to go with the flow. She said, quote, I feel like a lot of pressure added on to me because I can end up being eliminated for not doing well on this shoot because of his actions. A fellow contestant named Namia called it unfair of Kenya to be blaming someone outside of herself for her shoot going wrong. Judge Niall Barker agreed, criticizing the quality of the photos and telling Kenya to handle it better in the future, which I think that is like <laughs> insane. I mean, major red flags. This model is pushing his limits with this girl and you're not listening to anything she has to say. Another model who had a terrible experience on the show was Lauren London Levi. She goes by London and she appeared on Cycle 12. It was London's weight gain that garnered most of the attention from the judges, despite recovering from an eating disorder. Actually, the 18-year-old was criticized for gaining weight while on the show and staying in the house. Creative director Jay Manuel called her weight gain a shocking development, and unsurprisingly, London was eliminated that same episode. At the time, she told E! News, when I went to the competition, I was recovering from an ED, so my self confidence was already kind of shaky because of my experience and my problem beforehand, and I'm pretty sure it did show in my photo shoots. London hasn't been seen in the public eye since 2009, and hopefully she's went on to live a peaceful life. Now in one cycle, there was a really inappropriate photo shoot involving a model named Kayla. Now Kayla expressed her feelings when it came to making out with others. She was essayed when she was young, so she was traumatized, but she was still forced into this photo shoot despite having this past trauma and not wanting to get physical with someone, they wanted to push her again to get that good TV. I wasn't totally thrilled that we'd be joining in a kiss. I instantly was not happy at all. I just can't get this whole kiss thing out of my head. It was deeper to me than just being gay. I feel personally uncomfortable with intimacy with men. Now, this is something I am fully aware that the show knew was going to happen and that she was uncomfortable with guys, that she is a lesbian. And honestly, her making out with a man isn't like required for her to display her modeling skills. I mean, I feel like a kissing picture is just like not really like editorial. It's not really high fashion to be making out with someone. I mean, posing with someone is different than like having to go and get intimate. You're cool with this though, right? You're not cool with it. Why does it bother you? When I was 11, I um, was assaulted. And this whole challenge freaks me out. I don't want to kiss them. I don't want to interact with them. They scare me, and I really don't want to do it. It's like, if you're t saying to me right now, you'll throw away jobs if you've got to kiss a guy, I mean, you can't go through the rest of your life with this. You really can't. You have to deal with this. To me, it's really sad that she has to go and open up and share all of these things that she had gone through to the public when she's not ready. She's kind of in this situation where she feels really pressured and her only escape is to tell how she feels, to reveal this side of her. Earlier in this episode, we touched on the makeovers, but I wanna talk about how some of these makeovers are traumatizing, especially when they're done so incorrectly. Hey guys, have you ever thought about starting an online store but didn't know where to begin? Let me tell you about Shopify. What's great about Shopify is how, no matter how big you want to grow, they give you everything you need to take your business to the next level. It's the global commerce platform that supports your business at every stage, from launching your online shop to opening your first physical store, all the way to hitting those million order milestones. Shopify makes it easy to sell everywhere, whether online or in person, with their comprehensive e-commerce platform and POS system. Plus, their AI-powered Shopify magic helps you convert browsers into buyers effortlessly 
seriously everything's about ai nowadays and shopify is on top of it and did you know shopify powers 10 percent of all e-commerce in the u.s join the ranks of successful entrepreneurs with shopify sign up now for a one dollar per month trial period at shopify.com slash sloan that's shopify.com slash sloan don't miss out on this incredible opportunity to grow your business and enjoy this episode It's no secret that many of the America's Next Top Model contestants had to undergo extensive and sometimes painful makeovers at the start of their seasons. One model suffered through one of the worst makeover mishaps in top model history when she was given a weave over eight hours and then had it removed because it was so incredibly painful. She was on Cycle 8, which premiered in 2007, and she was given a brown weave. After having the weave installed, it took eight hours and it was extremely painful. She was told that they would be taking it all out and they would be cutting her hair short. She said, as my hair is being cut off, I just feel kind of traumatized in a scene from the show. At the end of her hair install, Jay let her know that they were wrong about her new look. Instead of working with her favor, the weave was making her look plain and boring, so they made her take it out. So after eight hours of having this thing in your head and like having it all pull on your hair and braided, you have to get it all taken out again. And it almost feels like it's her fault in that moment. I mean, I would be so livid. It takes about eight hours to complete my new fabulous do and it hurts like hell. Not taking you to that elevated look that the other girls are going to, like they're all starting to turn into kind of models. It's kind of bringing you down a little. We're gonna take the whole thing out. Kashawn is gonna do a really short, kind of very rosemary baby cut. Oh man, is my hair being cut off? I just feel kind of traumatized. You have to work extra hard now that you don't have any hair on your head. Now, hair is a sensitive topic, especially when it comes to these models and how they look because it's part of their brand and how they identify. So when some have to come onto the show and have um, maybe like medical issues, it puts a lot of pressure on them. Like this one contestant who had alopecia and the judges weren't too kind about it. There are so many instances where contestants express their concerns about their makeovers and then they are guilted by the judges to give in. Like I said earlier, I think that these makeovers were all for shock value to get good TV opposed to making the models feel better or more confident. Melrose really is just a control freak. A lot of young girls that try to over control the situation, they don't go too far away. No, I can't, dude, I can't. Just put your head down, please. I can't do this. The real lesson here is you gotta trust the people you work with. We're not making decisions for shock value. We're not making decisions for shock value, please. That's an absolute lie. She's extremely different. Mm -hmm. It's like such a shock. It was just kind of like too much. I don't feel attractive at all. It is a major change. It's it is. Dress, but you look beautiful. I'm just gonna go. I feel like my makeover is very masculine and we're posing nude today and looking like a boy kind of bothers me. You know, it's a little hard to look at myself. I mean, okay, so just to play devil's advocate, not that I really want to, but like when you are a model, you do have to do different looks. You have to look a certain way. I mean, I think changing your day-to-day -day look is something different, but I also think that there has to be some acknowledgement that you have to have some ability to transform yourself to fit whatever the client is looking for. I love my hair. <laughs> It'll always grow back. Bye-bye. It's okay, you are ready? No more beauty graduates. <laughs> Do you know what? You're gonna look so great, you don't even know. This is I... the really big... What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have you get the haircut that I wanted you to have. So you're not ready to cut your hair? No. You know, I really don't have time for this today, so you just gotta leave my set. I mean, the back and forth is just so... Uh, it's so amateur. I mean, if these people really don't want to cut their hair, then let them take the photos, and if their photos aren't well, then go ahead and do it. But it just seems like it's a storyline they're pushing. Now, in some cases, the hairdressers who were hired were so unprofessional and lacked the experience that they would end up hurting the contestant's hair or damaging them. I mean, their scalps would be raw, the weaves would be wrong, the hair color is disturbing. It seems like they would go and find a salon who would be doing it for free to get some like free promo. So it's not like top experts. Like Tyra Banks isn't allowing these people to touch her head. Ow, 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 ow. My head hurts so bad. 
I can't imagine getting something sewed into my head and having it pulled so hard. And I know like a lot of like, like black women, a lot of people like do hair things all the time, but when you're experienced with it, when you're anticipating it, that's different. When you've got people who don't know what they're doing, sewing it and pulling into your hair, like I would have such a pounding headache. And the people who were tasked with these jobs didn't know what they were doing. That's why I feel like they just like hire, like just got a salon that would do it for free because there were people having their hair slip off and it was all kinds of messy. My hair is disgusting. My whole head hurts. My ass hurts. I sat in a chair for six hours. Just to let you know, weaves do do that. Like they create rashes, little bumps, especially in the tight areas. It's part of that beauty pain thing. But we're going to suck it up, right? It will be removed. Again, I can't imagine going through that pain. I would be chopping it off. But there was a lot of painful things that these girls were exposed to. I mean, the conditions of some of these shoots were really questionable. So let's talk a little bit about that. There was one photo shoot in cycle seven, which featured a model posing in extremely cold water, actually leading to one of the models, Carity English, developing hypothermia. In cycle eight, there was a gruesome photo shoot where models posed as murder victims in a mock crime scene. In another photo shoot, contestants had to pose as dead bodies in a filthy bathroom setting. And then finally, in cycle 18, contestants were made to pose on a 1,000 foot tower during a storm in a foreign country. Towards the end of the series in cycle 2022, contestants had to shoot in pitch black conditions, which was particularly challenging and potentially unsafe, especially for one of the contestants who were deaf that season. So he's like dependent on his sight and other senses to make up for his hearing loss. So definitely not safe. There have been other photo shoots where they pose with a bull or a high heels walk challenge that left a girl with crutches. There was a treadmill runway. There was a time where they posed in a landfill. They encouraged these situations and these models to partake in scenes that would literally never happen in the modeling world. Like what photo shoot? Where do we see, uh, what's her name? The Hadids, like the Bella Hadid, the Gigi. Where where do we see the Hadid sisters doing anything similar to this or a Kardashian? They don't. It's reality TV and it sucks and it's dangerous. I mean, imagine the a thousand foot tower with the storm and you're so close to win. I would just, I don't know. I feel like I would pass out during it. Because I stepped on it with one foot, I like slid. And because their goal was good television, they purposely made these conditions unsafe. For example, one contestant came forward and said, the runway that we did on the water was purposely made wobbly. No runway is ever made that way. Runways are meant to be solid, but they put us in these pin thin skirts that didn't even have slits. So we had to walk up this crooked runway. They made the show for TV. Some people have made some memes over these moments. For example, they compared it to Squid Game, saying Tyra Banks would have made this runway challenge on America's Next Top Model, talking about a scene from the show. Which takes us to the contestant mistreatment, because a lot of these people who participated, they were treated so terribly, not only by Tyra, but by production. Tyra Banks was called out for paying America's Next Top Model contestants as little as $40 a day. According to former contestants that participated on the show, they were paid very little. Sarah from Cycle 9 said they were given $40 a day, which was per diem to cover their daily expenses. I guess if you're considering going to like McDonald's in the morning, lunch, and like I don't even know how uh, 40 bucks, I guess that would be 40 bucks, but it would have to be a very like a low budget meal. The contestants had to pay for their own food out of this $40 day allowance. They did not receive any residuals or additional compensation beyond their per diem. Lisa D'Amato, who is someone we've actually interviewed on this channel. If you guys love this episode, go and check out my episode with Lisa. She actually participated in she exposed Tyra in that episode. She shared that they actually received $45 a day, but there's, you know, a few discrepancies. The low pay for contestants stood in stark contrast to Tyra's salary, which was about $30 million a year. Lisa has been quoted saying that they don't feed you enough. We had a small per diem, but so many girls sent their money home. The per diem was also used for toiletries, tampons, whatever you could need while you're away. So if you came and you didn't have a lot of money to begin with, you're not off to a good start. One contestant was asked, what's one 
one experience from the show you remember the most. They replied, elimination. We probably stood there sometimes for eight to nine hours until 3.30 in the morning during deliberation. If they had a production issue or if something happened, we just stood and stood while being hungry all the time. All we wanted was food. I remember walking in there and just shaking like a leaf. I wanted to win the show because I was poor and wanted to help my family. So it was like a lottery to me. People don't see on TV is that like, I mean, it, it's insane, like, the amount of bullshit that me and the other girls went through. There are times when we didn't get fed. We had to film straight through 15, 18 hours without eating, so we're starving. So then that plays on your mental attitude because it's almost like they want us to go in there angry so they can have drama. So, okay, let's starve them. Let, let's withhold food. Let's withhold water because you know how you get when you're hungry. That's kind of a reality show well-known secret. You give them lack of food, you give them extra booze, and then you get extra drama. But Tyra Banks is the face of this show and she has to answer for some of the things that she's done. Let's talk about this viral moment that continues to live on where Tyra was pushed over the edge. She yelled at Tiffany and went off on her. It was incredibly unprofessional, but one of the biggest moments to come out from this series. When my mother yells at this, it's because she loves me. I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. How dare you learn something from this? When you go to bed at night, you lay there and you take responsibility for yourself. Because nobody's going to take responsibility for you. In my perspective, I do think that Tyra is partially acting here. I mean, she doesn't have this tight connection with the contestants like you would think. You rarely see her unless the cameras are present. So she's not friendly with them. She doesn't necessarily care about them on a human level, maybe as a contestant or um, as a, a star on their show. But I really think that Tyra kind of, maybe she has something else going on in her life, but she really pulled out that emotion to get that moment that we all know so well. Tiffany explained that Tyra's rant was 1,000 times worse than what viewers saw. Tyra said, you can go back to your house and sleep on your mattress on the floor with your baby. And Tyra is saying this in front of everyone, just embarrassing Tiffany. However, Tiffany recognizes that this moment made for good TV, even if it was at her expense. Which is kind of sad that she's like accepting that. Like, oh, I guess it's good TV. Just like, you know, use me as the laughing stock. Make fun of me and my baby in our living situation. Jeez. Oh, as I was just saying, contestants have been open that Tyra had barely spoken to them or offered them help with their modeling career. This is essentially a reality show. And she was just like another, con like not a contestant, but like an actor. She was just playing a character. Playing a character of someone who's like caring about these girls and helping them through the competition. And, you know, even though the show was a big hit there haven't been that many models who have come out on the other side those who have like Winnie Harlow she has been open about Tyra not maybe being the best like figure or mentor or even a helpful person at all so I really started after the show because that really didn't do anything for my career uh-huh which it doesn't do anything for any model's career realistic we could do a whole episode on the Tyra Banks show and the emotional manipulation that she used to kind of have that daily talk show and the guests that she would bring on. But this emotional manipulation, these tactics, they were used on America's Next Top Model as well. Like when Tyra pretends to faint in front of everyone for a scene and just really playing with these girls. I mean, they could not build a genuine re like relationship with this person because Tyra isn't being genuine at all. So tired, you guys. <laughs> so... I'm so sorry, you guys. I don't mean to be all weak in front of you, but I'm just so lightheaded. <laughs> I had to include that fall because it is ridiculous. I mean, really, Tyra, no one's believing it. But that show was entertaining, even if it came at other people's expenses and probably left a bad mark on society and kind of like pushed us in the wrong direction. It was entertaining. Yeah. Sucks for all those people, though, that have gone through this and had to put up with Tyra. You want to know something that's really interesting? <clears throat> so if you do astrology, like natal charts, so essentially everyone has like a <clears throat> astrology sign, like a Sagittarius, a, an Aries, whatever you may be. But you also have like 10 other signs or nine other signs for all the planets. And um, if you look at the signs, at least from my memory, uh, when I looked it up and I compared mine in like this database, me and Tyra Banks, we share all of the same star signs. Like we have the same sun, moon, Mercury, Venus, like everything's the same. So like if there's any, if there's only like one celebrity out there who I have a perfect match with and it's Tyra Banks. Isn't that kind of random? 
Like, I feel like I'm not Tyra Banks coded, but am I? <gasps> you guys are scaring me. Am I? I mean, I, I, I don't hate Tyra Banks. I do think that she, like, I think she, what she did that's disheartening is that she kind of, like, was a sellout, you know? Like, sold out to these things that were, like, maybe against some of her moral beliefs. But, um, yeah. I feel like I haven't heard from her in a while. I wonder what she's up to. But um, we have the same Zodiac. So imagine me as a model. I'm way too short to be a model. But I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And I'll see you in a new one soon. Bye, guys.